All right, let's take a look at 4-4. Um, what's the easiest way to solve this? Can you do this? Everybody watch, please. Need your attention. This is the problem from algebra, algebra 2 maybe. Okay, can you do this? Is that one of the answers? Yeah, that is. <laughs> it is one of the answers, okay? But if you solve it that way, doesn't one of the answers that actually works in this equation disappear? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you have to be really careful when you divide. You want to make sure that you're not eliminating one of the potential answers. So that's a way to solve it and get one of the answers. But if you keep with that simplified approach, you're not going to get all the answers. So the correct way to do this is to set this equal to zero. Treat it like you would any other quadratic. So we're going to set that equal to zero. Then we're going to do the math F word. So we're going to factor, right? Solution that comes from here, there's our one half. And what comes from here? Zero. Okay. Had we stuck with that very simplified approach that gave us one of the answers, we wouldn't get the other one. Now, that's going to be important in just a minute, okay? So, everybody agree that those are the two answers there? Okay, nice, easy factoring problem. Set each factor equal to zero. All that good stuff that you've known for several years now. Any questions? Okay, this is a quadratic. It's already set equal to zero. Does it factor? Okay, I believe it does. You can actually look at it and know for a fact that it factors um, without guess and check or anything. You can multiply the 6 and the 2 together. That's 12. Are there numbers that multiply to be 12 that combine to be negative 7? Yes. If you can answer that question, this will factor. You can do this by trinomial grouping. Sometimes people call that reverse foil. Okay, Or you can just do guess and check. So the way we're going to factor this is we're going to use a 3x and a 2x. Hopefully those are the right choices. If it's 6 and 1, we're going to go through at least two guesses, get them wrong, and then we're going to change to a 6 and a 1. Did I guess right here? Okay, let's hope so. Um, let's see, I need to multiply to be a 2. Multiply to be a 2 and somehow combine to be a 7, a negative 7. So I'm going to need a 2 here and a 1 here, and they both need to be negative, right? So these multiply to be positive 2. These multiply to be positive 6x squared. These multiply to be negative 4x, and that multiplies to be negative 3x, so that's negative 7x for that middle term. Let's wait. Um, can, you know can get, get what? The get this factoring? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, can I do this on a separate piece of paper? Yeah. Okay. If, if you're not very good at guess and check, um, in fact, I encourage my Math 10, st 10 students to do it this way. Okay. <laughs> so this is the way I tell them to do it. If you take these two numbers and multiply them together, what do you get? You get positive 12. The sign's important also. Are there numbers that multiply to be positive 12 that combine to be negative 7? Yep, negative 4 and negative 3. They uh, multiply to be a positive. They combine to be a negative 7. Everybody good there? I then rewrite the middle term using those two. That's all I'm going to change. I'm going to write a minus 4x, a minus 3x, and then a plus a 2. There are four terms here. Once you get more than three terms, we usually try factor by grouping. So what can I take out of these two? I can take out a 2 and an x. I'm left with a 3x minus a 2. Now, I have to take something out of these. What can I take out? Okay, very good. I have to take out a negative and a 1. I'm going to write that as a negative 1. That makes this a 3x and a minus 2. I now have these two terms. They have one factor in common. It's 3x minus 2. If I take a 3x minus 2 out of this one, the 2x is left. And if I take a 3x minus 2 out of this one, there's a minus 1 left, and there's the correct factoring. The nice thing about this is when you get some really oddball factoring problems, you could go through eight different guesses before you get the right one. The nice thing about this is no matter how easy or how difficult this is, this will factor it. It will also tell you whether or not it's prime. Because something might look like it factors, but if you can't find the answer to this question, I mean, don't give up right away. But if this doesn't have an answer, it's prime. You can stop right there. How would you solve a quadratic if it's prime? Quadratic formula. Quadratic formula. Is that good? Any questions? OK. 
Okay, let's go back to this. So this is the right factoring. That means the solution that we get from this one is two-thirds. The solution we get from this one is one-half. There's that nice little trick, take the opposite of this number, divide by the coefficient. Okay, it even works for really easy ones. Okay, so there are the, there are the answers there. Now, let's turn our attention to this mess right here. That looks pretty awful, doesn't it? Anglade okay. says it looks great. Okay, Anglade can do it. Okay, well, for most people, if you just walk in here and all you've had is a basic algebra class, you know how to factor, you know how to solve quadratics, that looks absolutely awful. You probably wouldn't want to solve this by squaring everything out, but what technique did you learn in 1050? And didn't we talk about that the other day? We use substitution a lot. You're going to find a substitution technique come up in calculus quite a bit. Keep this in mind. You listening? Substitutions are used to make things look more familiar. They're used to make them look easier. So if I just take this problem and I say, you know what? I'm going to say u is equal to the square root of x minus 1. That means wherever there's a square root of x minus 1, I can put a u. So I'm going to do 6u squared minus 7u plus 2 equals 0. That makes me feel a lot better looking at that one. I can also factor this, and I get these answers right here. Yeah. Really? You interrupted class just so you could ask if you could get a drink of water? Go get a drink. Okay. So one of the answers that would come from here would be u equals 2 thirds. The other one would be u equals 1 half. Questions there? So all we have to do at this point, this is easy. I mean, really, well, I skipped a line of work here. So this is the answer, but it's in terms of u. Was the original problem in terms of u? Nope. So just like we learned the other day, we then reverse the substitution. So we're going to say the square root of x minus 1 has to equal 2 thirds for that one. And we're going to say the square root of x minus 1 equals 1 half. And then we solve each one of those. So I'm going to add 1 here. That's going to be the square root of x equals, this would be 5 thirds. Did I do my arithmetic correct there? This one's going to be the square root of x equals, this is going to be 3 halves. So when I square both sides, this is what I end up with. I'm going to end up with a 25 ninths for this answer. And I'm going to end up with a 9 fourths for this answer. That's a tiny little space to put, fit the answer and the work for such an ugly problem. Okay? They work because they're positive. So Anglade reminds us that whenever you're working with an equation, you do want to check and make sure that you can actually plug it back in. You'd have to be careful if your original equation had division, even roots, or logarithms. Okay? And now we can add a third one to that. If your teacher in your pre-calculus classes emphasize those three, we can add a third one. There are some trig functions you can't plug in any number you want. For example, tangent. Can you plug in anything you want there? Yes, you can. It's a trick question. Cotangent? No, because it's got asymptotes, right? Secant? No. Cosecant? No. Any one of those three, the reciprocal trig functions, They've got asymptotes. They have problems in their domain. So you've got to be a little bit careful with those. Okay? Oh, tangent, too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it does have asymptotes. Okay? I was kidding myself, okay? All right, let's take a look. So the first problem that we're going to look at, we're going to use a lot of these skills here, a lot of algebra, a lot of factoring and different things like that. Let's take a look at this problem here. You do want to be really careful with these because you want to make sure that you get all of the answers. Okay? So if they say get all of them or all of them in a particular interval, make sure you're answering in the correct mode, like this one happens to ask uh, ans one answers in radians. If they want them in degrees, make sure you're doing it that way. Um, if they want all of them, you're going to have answer sets. If they want, you know, just between 0 and pi or something like that, those are all the only ones that you're responsible for. Okay. Um, let me point out why this one's really ugly. It's this thing right here. Okay? This is the angle 2x, and this is the angle x. So if everything were in terms of the same angle, at least we'd have a shot at it. That's what we've been doing up until this section right here. Okay? Most of the time we turn things into an x or a u or something like that, and we solved it. So that's what we're going to do here. 
What could we do to change this so that this isn't the angle 2x anymore, it's just the angle x? Yeah? Uh, you sort of do the double angle. Double angle identity for sine. Which is, because you memorized it for the last test, 2 sine of x cosine of x equals cosine of x. Good there? Okay, now we'll try and solve this. Now, one thing that people typically do is they think, you know what, this is complicated enough. If I could just get rid of a sine, because there's a, excuse me, a cosine, because there's a cosine on both sides, how could I get rid of the cosine on both sides? I could divide. Let me call your attention to this problem right here, though was dividing by that variable, which is in effect what cosine of x is, was that a good idea? No, because it eliminated one of the answers. So listen carefully, because this is going to come up again, and it's going to come up on your assignment as well. If you divide and that function disappears, it will take the answers with it. So you don't want to do that. If you divide and that function stays around, that's not a problem. Okay. Here, if we divide by cosine x, it would disappear from both sides. That's not a good thing. So let's not do that. So what was our technique that we used up above? Yeah, we, we got everything on one side. Whoops. We got everything on one side, set it equal to 0, and we factored. They both have a cosine of x. I'm left with 2 sine of x minus 1 equals 0. And then we just solve this problem right here. There are two factors, this one and this one. Either one or both of them could make it equal to 0. So we want to know when the cosine of x is equal to 0. And we also want to know when the sine of x is equal to positive 1 half. Is that right? Now, should we bother? We OK? I see some strange looks. We're good? I just solved this all at once. Move the 1 to the other side, divided by 2. We're good? Okay. Um, do we need to bother writing down answer sets? Not on this one. It only wants answers between 0 and 2 pi. Okay? So let's find that here. Where is the cosine, or in other words, where is the x-coordinate on the unit circle equal to 0? Right here, and again, right here. So that's going to be at pi halves, and... 3 pi halves. So those are the two solutions that come from that factor right here. So had we divided by cosine and gotten rid of cosine altogether, two of those answers would have disappeared. Okay, let's take a look at this one right here. We want the sine ratio, or in other words, the opposite side or the y-coordinate on the unit circle, we want that to be 1 half. That's going to happen about right here. So that's 1 half. That angle there in radians is pi... 6, okay? And then we've got another one over here that's just the same. That's a ratio of 1 half. Um, that means, well, gosh, this is pi, and we need to back off pi 6. So we're going to subtract pi 6. That, whoops, that's going to give me 5 pi 6. Those are the two answers there. So the answers that come from this one are pi 6 and 5 pi 6. So for this one problem, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 answers. Why are they the solutions? Because when you plug them in here, they make the equation true. Let's just double check that really quickly. Okay? Um, Kaylee, pick any one of these. Pick pi halves. Let's plug that in here. So this is the sine of 2 times pi halves should equal the cosine of pi halves. Cancel these. Sine of pi should equal the cosine of pi halves. Let's see, the cosine of pi halves, that's going to be 0. The sine of pi is 0. They do equal each other. Okay? So that's, that's typically how you're going to approach these problems. Okay, now they're all a little bit different. I'm going to go through a couple of steps that you can use to solve um, trig equations in quadratic form or factor factorable form and different things like that. So... One of the first things is, and this is usually the best idea, is to write everything in terms of the same angle. We saw in the example above, if we had left this at 2x, I mean, imagine what a pain that would be. So use your identities to write everything in terms of the same angle. 
Now, the next one, again, these are general guidelines, not necessarily step one, step two, step three, and so forth. The next thing is write everything in terms of the same trig function. Now, did we do that on this problem? We didn't. Okay, it wasn't necessary. Okay, sometimes that's a good idea, sometimes it's not. It just depends on the problem. Okay, set the equation equal to zero. That nearly always is a good idea. Okay. I mean, at least some point you're probably going to end up doing that. And then the last one is use the algebra skills like factoring, especially taking out the greatest common factor, the GCF, substitution technique, changing variables, different things like that. Okay? So you're going to be using identities from trig. You're going to be using factoring. You're going to be um, doing substitutions, all sorts of stuff. Okay? Again, these are general ideas, um, but keep those in mind. Got to use your head on all these. Okay, are there any questions? Okay. Is this a difficult problem then? Yeah. Okay. This has that same form as what we saw before. In fact, if I write it like this, with that quantity squared, and that as a quantity, then it looks very much the same. So we're going to do a change of variables. We're going to do a u substitution. We're going to make this look more familiar. Okay, now, everybody listening? Whenever you're dealing with one of these, this is one of those multiple angle equations we're going to end up solving. Again, it's generally a good idea to write down the answer sets, but we'll kind of see how that goes and see how you feel about that. So here's what we've got. We've got 6u squared minus 7u plus 2 equals 0. We know what that factors to. We've got a 3u and we've got a 2u. We needed the 2 here and the 1 here, and they both needed to be negative. So, again, I'm showing all the work here. We could, we could skip that and go right to this. u is equal to 2 thirds and u is equal to 1 half, right? Everybody good to there? Okay. Then we've got to solve this. But this wasn't about u's. It was actually about the cosine of x over 2. So this means the cosine of x over, whoops, x over 2 should be equal to 2 thirds. And the cosine of x over 2 should be equal to 1 half. And then we've got to solve those. Okay, now I'm going to solve the easy one first. Which one's easy, the first one or the second one? The second one is. Now, everybody watch, please. If I were doing this and I wanted to make sure I got the answers right, whenever you've got one of these multiple angle equations, I would make another substitution. So I'm going to call this a theta substitution, all right? So theta is going to be x over 2. So this means I've got the cosine of theta equals 1 half. So let's think about that. These are x coordinates. That's going to happen here at pi thirds. Your calculator will tell you that answer in degrees, 60 degrees. Your calculator gives you this. Where are the other answers that also work for that? Flop it straight down here, right? Because we need the same x-coordinate. So again, comparing with which axis? The x-axis. If this is 2 pi, we're going to back off pi thirds. So this is going to be 5 pi thirds. So the answer set that I get from here is I get two of them. Theta equals pi thirds plus 2k pi. And I get theta equals 5 pi thirds plus 2k pi. Yeah. Um, if you're thinking ahead and you've got everything absolutely straight in your head, I suppose you could leave it off on some of them. This one's a double angle. We're going to end up multiplying this by 2. So one of these is going to get eliminated. But if this were, a, if this were times by 2 or something like that, again, your best bet is to go through, write the answer sets, then eliminate. Don't eliminate anything too quickly. You're probably just fine, okay? Because your shins and your brain are already warmed up, right? Okay. Everybody good there? Okay, 
That's the answer in terms of theta, but what was the variable in the original problem? It was x, okay? So I need to take each one of these, and I'm going to do this. x over 2 is equal to pi thirds plus 2k pi. And this one's x over 2 equals 5 pi thirds plus 2k pi. So if I multiply by 2 to get x finally all by itself, this is going to be x equals, this is going to be 2 pi thirds plus, help me out here, 4k pi. Remember, dividing x by 2 slows down the cosine curve, so it produces answers much more slowly. Okay? It takes 4 pi to do one cycle. And this one's going to be, 10 pi thirds plus 4k pi. So that's just one of these. Okay, we haven't even got to this guy over here that's 2 thirds. Okay, now, Jason is right. You don't need the 4, 4k pi because the answers are supposed to be between 0 and 2 pi. You don't need that. But here's the interesting part. If you plug in a 0, you get 2 pi thirds. Is that in the correct interval? Yes, it is. So we're going to keep 2 pi thirds. Do we need to use this answer set for anything else? Nope, because any other number you plug in, any other integer, integer you plug in for k is going to produce something outside that full circle from 0 to 2 pi. Good there? What happens if you plug in a 0 here? 10 pi thirds. 10 pi thirds is outside the full circle anyway. So we get nothing from this. That's it. That's what we get from this one. So I got these two answer sets. From that, I only get one answer that's in the correct interval. Okay? Now let's double check and make, it, make sure we can do this one. Okay? So I'm going to bring this one up here. This says the cosine of x over 2 is equal to 2 thirds. I'm going to, again, do a theta substitution. So this is going to be theta equals x over 2. So this means we're solving cosine of theta equals 2 thirds. Does that look recognizable? Not to me. Okay, I do know that the answer is in quadrant 1, but let's check and see what it is. So I'm going to answer this in radians. So I check and make sure I'm in radians. I'm going to do the cosine inverse of... 2 divided by 3. So here's the answer. What did it say? 0 0.83? 0 0.841. There's one answer. Where is the other answer that has the same cosine ratio? The adjacent's got to be 2 thirds. That's right here. So it's going to be down here. If we can compare to the x-axis, the closest part of the x-axis, this is going to be 2 pi minus 0.841. So we'll grab the calculator. Um, in some sense, if you're paying attention, um, this is unnecessary. Okay? So one of the answers is, so this is uh, 5.442. So we get this. Theta equals, theta equals, 5.442 plus 2k pi. And this one's going to be 0.841 plus 2k pi. Okay, once I replace these with x over 2, this is going to become x equals, I'm going to double all of these. So this is going to be 1.682 plus 4k pi. And this one's going to be x equals 10.2. What do I got? 884 plus 4k pi. Take a good look at this one. This one right here. Are any of those answers going to be in our interval? Nope. So you can eliminate that one. What's the only answer we get from this one? 1.682. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Let's run through this again. 
we solve this. These are good general techniques. If you see something like Jason did that you can eliminate, that's fine with me, but make sure it works on every problem that you do. Don't, don't, I mean, if you're using your head, make sure your head's telling you the right answer. There was a part of this we could eliminate, but you don't want to eliminate too much too early. Okay? So we got, let's see, one, two, three, four answer sets. And how many answers actually worked? Only two. Only two were in the correct interval. Okay, so you do have to be careful with those. Any questions? Sure? Good, bad, ugly? We doing all right? Okay, let's take a look at the other side then. Okay, this is problem number 15. It's from your textbook. It says, find all the values of theta in that interval that satisfy this equation, round, round approximate answers to the nearest tenth. Sticking with the general rules. First thing we usually like to do is write everything in terms of the same angle. Is everything in terms of the same angle? Yeah, they're all in terms of the angle x, so that's good news there. What's the next general idea? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right, everything in terms of the same trig function. Would it be easy to change everything into the term into the same trig function? Yes, it would. I've got a sine squared here, maybe a Pythagorean identity. I've got a sine there. Not a whole lot I can do with that, but I do have a cosine squared. Cosine squared is the same as one minus sine squared of x. So I'm going to move everything over to the same side. So that's going to give me 6 sine squared of x minus 2 sine of x. And if I move this over, this is going to be a minus 1. Now we sit and stare at this for just a second. And we say, does this factor? You could do some guess and check if you want, but again, if you, if you understand that technique I showed earlier, or remind you of earlier, multiply 6 and negative 1 together. That's negative 6. Are there any numbers that multiply to be negative 6 that combine to be negative 2? Multiply to be negative 6, combine to be negative 2. Nope. It's prime. What do you have to use? Quadratic formula. Okay. I picked one of the hardest problems on the assignment. You have one like this. Okay. So this is how you do it. You've got to solve this using the quadratic formula. So everybody watch, please. This means normally it's x equals the quadratic formula. What am I going to write? I'm going to say the sine of x equals the quadratic formula. So this is going to be 2, negative b, plus or minus b squared, minus 4 times a times c. So that's going to be a 6 and a negative 1, all over 2a. So that's all over 12. Uh, be careful with this part. Don't screw this up. This is going to be 4. Am I going to be adding something or subtracting something? I'm going to be adding. I'm going to be adding 28. Sorry, 24. I'm thinking of the answer, aren't I? Okay, add 24. So this is going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of 28, which I'm going to write as 2 radical 7 over 12. We're doing all right there? And I can clean this up just a little bit. What could I do? Take a 2 out of the top, take a 2 out of the bottom, and cancel it. So here's what I've got. I've got the sine of x is equal to 1 plus or minus radical 7 all over 6. Any questions to that point? Okay, so that means you've got to do this. That means the sine of x is equal to 1 plus radical 7 over 6. Okay, or sine of x is equal to 1 minus radical 7 over 6. So that means x is equal to the sine inverse of, yeah, Josue, Okay. Yeah. Type that in your calculator. 
And the other one is x equals the sine inverse of 1 plus radical 7 over 6. Or sorry, 1 minus. So we'll grab our calculator. It does say we need to be in radians. What's that? We okay? Did I make any mistakes? Okay. So we're going to do a sine inverse. Um, and I'm going to need parentheses on the top, right? Don't just start typing that in. 1 plus radical 7. Close the parentheses and close them again for the top. Divide by 6. That's going to spit out an answer of 0.65. Did I do it right? Confirmation there? Brian. We're good? Okay. Watch. That answer right there is 0.653. It's in quadrant one. Where does sine inverse give you answers? First and fourth. Okay. So your calculator will do these. How do you figure out the ones on the other side? Got to use your brain. Sine is the y coordinate. So we need another triangle that looks just like this one, but over here. If this angle is 0 0.653, that angle is 0 0.653, and I compare it to the x-axis. So am I going to take pi and add or subtract? Subtract. So this is going to be pi minus 0.653. Okay? Get that decimal, that decimal right there. Those are the two answers. Okay, what's the only thing I need to do for this one? On the calculator, that is. Just, why make my life difficult? Hit second enter. Go back here and change this to a minus. Hit enter. And it says 0.277. Is that right? Negative 0.277. Now, Somebody tell me something wrong with this right now. Yes? It needs, it's outside the range. It's outside the range. Okay? So we're going to take 2 pi, and we're going to subtract that or add that, if you want to think of it. Subtract the size of the angle. Subtract or add the angle itself. So we're going to take oh, whoops, 2 pi, and we're going to subtract that. That's going to be one answer. There's another one over here, and how do you get that? What, what part of the x-axis are we comparing to? Pi. How big is this angle? Okay, it is bigger than pi, but how big is that reference angle right there? It's the 0.277, so we're going to add 0.277. Okay, so those are going to be the answers. Are there any questions? Sure. Yeah. Um, how did you get the 2.77? Uh, I did sine inverse of this stuff right here. Questions? Okay, let's take a look. I've got three more problems, right? Um, they're not as bad as they look. Look at, uh, I think number 28 is on your assignment. So keep in mind all the stuff that we've been talking about already. And this particular set of problems says you can answer these in degrees. Make sure you round to the nearest tenth. Okay. Um, are they both in terms of the same trig function? Or sorry, same angle? Yeah. Yes. What do you think we ought to do? Change it to the same trig function so I could find like a double angle for cosine and a double angle for sine and change all that sort of stuff. That would work. You could do it that way. Not a problem at all. How about this? You watching? Everybody watch because this will come up again on the assignment. What did I say about dividing? Good idea or bad idea? Generally speaking, a bad idea, but I qualified that and I said, if that trig function disappears, does it disappear? It doesn't. This side is a 1. There's still the cosine of 2 theta here. What is the sine of 2 theta over the cosine of 2 theta? So this is 3 tangent 2 theta. 
So we're actually finding where the tangent of 2 theta equals 1 third. And what would we do to solve this? Do a u substitution. So the tangent of u equals 1 third. So u equals the tangent inverse of 1 third. Grab your calculator. I'm going to make sure this is in radi or, excuse me, degree mode. Tangent inverse, whoops, tangent inverse 1 divided by 3, 18.43 degrees. How often does it repeat? Every pi or every 180 degrees, since we're in degrees here. Nearly done with the assignment. What else do I need to do? Problem was not about u's, it was about theta, so let's change it back to theta. 2 theta equals 18.49 plus 180k. Divide by 2. So theta equals, this is going to be 9 point, like 245 plus 90k. And then you want all the answers that work in this interval. So the first one that works is 9.425 degrees. The next one that works would be another 90 degrees on top of that. Yeah. What is it? Oh, did I write it down wrong? 4, 3. Okay. So 4, 3. So this would be 2, 2, 3. 2, 2, 5. Something in there, right? 215, 215. Because you're so picky. Okay. The next one would be 90 degrees more than that. So that's going to be 99.215. We could make our lives a little bit easier because they said round to the nearest tenth. So this would be 9.2, 99.2. The next one would be... 189.2 and so forth until you get all the way to something that's bigger than uh, 360. Any questions? Okay, I'm going to let you go early on Friday, quite a bit early on Friday. 29, 2 sine of theta, cosine of theta equals 3 sine of theta. Ideas here? Move this over to sine theta, cosine theta, whoops, minus 3 sine theta equals 0. Somebody over here on this side of the room, what do we do next? Anyone? Greatest common factor. Thank you, Taylor. So we're going to take out a sine of theta, and we're going to get 2, whoops, cosine theta, and then we're going to have a minus 3 equals 0. Sine of theta equals 0. Can we get answers from that? Absolutely. Cosine of theta equals 3 halves. Nobody say anything. Take a good look at that. Look at this right here. Cosine of theta equals one and a half. The adjacent is three, the hypotenuse is two. Does that happen? Nope. No solutions there. You can find the ones from this one, right? Okay, last problem. Okay, are there any questions so far? Okay, this might look the ugliest. Does anybody recognize that? It's, it's a sum identity for tangent. Okay, So this ugly expression right here can be written real simply as the tangent of, what are we doing with the 3 theta and the 2 theta? Adding them, just like we would for sine. Okay? Equals 1. That's it. u equals 5 theta. So where does tangent of u equal 1? 
at 45 degrees and that repeats every 180 degrees. If I replace this, I have 5 theta equals 45 plus 180K. So theta equals 9 degrees plus, what's 180 divided by 5? It is 36. So what is the first answer that works? 9 works. How far do you have to go before you get to another one that works? Another 36 degrees, or that would be 45. Add another 36, so that's going to be 81. Keep adding 36 over and over and over again. You can type that into your calculator. You can just say this. You can do 9 plus 45. Whoops, it was 36, wasn't it? Plus 36. Just keep hitting enter until you get something that's bigger than... Uh, Okay, let's see. I kept you over by three minutes. I'll at least double that on Friday, if not more. Okay? See you tomorrow with questions. Have a great day.